when I was young, I wanted to be Rory, but now I've evolved into my jealous of Lorelai years. But what I think it really is, is I'm kind of jealous of their lives. A world where you can eat out multiple times a day and face no financial consequences, where everyone in town knows your name, thinks you're funny and a little kooky, where multiple boys are on a quest to date you, the only girl in town who reads, where you can wear a bucket hat and no one makes fun of you for it. But so many of the things that make Gilmore Girls so dreamy is just a healthy community. You've got intergenerational friends, all of whom attend town hall meetings together. What I miss? A grocery store in walking distance where you can buy cornstarch and presumably other food. Multiple affordable places to get a meal. There's outdoor music, art, events. There's public transit that brings you directly to your prestigious high school. You can easily walk around and jaywalking is practically encouraged because there are only three cars that are ever seen moving. According to a costumer on Gilmore Girls who has a TikTok, that car was usually driven by Juanita, a precision driver. This brings us to the reality of Stars Hollow. It isn't real. It's a set with actors and precision drivers. It's a fictional world that looks so real because of how fake it is. Stars Hollow is on a Warner Brothers outdoor set. Most of it's filmed on a lot called Midwest business and residential streets. And I think that's one of the things that makes it so special is how easily you can recognize it. I'm an architectural girly, so I respect the impersonation game. You've got Luke's Diner with the Mansard Roof, a classic of a town that was thriving in the 1890s. I've talked about Mansard Roofs and Second Empires being haunted icons. And considering Luke is a grumpy man who's looked longingly at the same woman for decades, he could be the next Miss Havisham. Then there's Dosie's Market, a corner store with an Oriole window above the entryway. There used to be multiple corner groceries in almost every town. And are we that surprised that Taylor Dosie would be the last man standing? No. And then there's a long row of shops which all have architecture inspirations from anywhere, everywhere. Most little main streets in the Hudson Valley would be embarrassed that they only have Italianates in comparison to the variation in Stars Hollow. And only steps away from those is the fake brick public high school, which is only a one minute walk from Luke's. Rory said, no, I prefer a uniform and a bus, thank you. There is a church, but Gilmore Girls doesn't really do much with it. Pretty Little Liars was also filmed on this set and boy, did they take advantage of that church. Funerals every other week. They were getting breakfast, going shopping, witnessing a murder all before school even started. And you can only do that in a walkable community. This set on the Warner Brothers lot is sometimes referred to as any town USA because it looks like it could be anywhere in the US. In a 2000 article from the LA Times, this line stuck out to me. Indeed, one of the highest compliments Warner Brothers received was from someone who said the set resembled the downtown near the University of Iowa in Iowa City. That does sound like a nice compliment, so please in the comments, please tell me what downtown I look like. Now, if I was to visit Stars Hollow, the first place I'm visiting is Kim's Antiques because looking at old things somehow fills a hole inside of me that I'd actually prefer not to, to cover today. That is a great example of a shop being used beyond its original intention. It looks from the outside like an old house, but functions well as an antique store and a place to live. Or Luke's, which was a hardware store and then was altered to be a diner and an apartment. Or the bookstore, which on its off hours is a movie theater. Or the dance studio that is also the town hall and a place to have an innocent sleepover and also later a not so innocent sleepover. All these places have multiple functions and when people use a space, this is what often happens. They make the most of the space that they have. For example, this is the couch where I watch TV. It is also the couch where I'm recording this video and where I eat lunch 90% of the time. So the essence of Stars Hollow is that it's mixed use. It's a type of zoning that means residential, commercial, entertainment, and cultural can all be within the same area. It's how most colleges are set up. It's also how most places you dream of vacationing are set up. Disneyland, Paris, a beach town. They all have the place you stay in the same area as the place you wanna do things. But why does zoning matter at all? Because the fact that the US has so little mixed use zoning is also the reason we're not living our Lorelei lifestyle. I'm gonna use Dosi's Market as an example. It seems like he's the main grocery in town and most people live near the town center and go to his grocery store. It's an easy and convenient place to get groceries. But if you lived a little bit further out, you would have to either walk a longer distance or get in your car and drive to the supermarket. Unless, imagine if where you lived a few blocks away had another little grocery store. 
this is supposed to be any town USA, so let's use any town, like Kenosha, Wisconsin. This city has a journalist who gathered all of the grocery stores that have ever been in Kenosha. And oh my God, this list is thorough. He reports that in the early 1930s, there were 140 neighborhood groceries for the city's population of 50,000. Today, Kenosha has a population of 100,000. So if we do a little ratio math trick and everything grew in proportion to the population growth, we should be looking at 280 neighborhood groceries. But they did not grow proportionately. They shrunk exponentially. There are currently only six neighborhood food stores in Kenosha, and there are about five supermarkets. And unlike before where they were dotting the entire city, they are all on the outskirts of the city. But why are they located there? It's not really close to where a lot of people live. The land was cheap and had plenty of room for big parking lots. The business model was they could sell a wider variety of items for cheaper by selling at a huge volume. They were also looking for lower cost items. So they were often buying from national food suppliers instead of local farms. But that doesn't mean these markets closed right away. This is now a barber shop, but from 1945 to 1996, it was a grocery called Hayden's Market. And you'll notice that the wall on the corner of the street is at an angle, which is probably where the door entrance was. And above it, a cute window, kind of like an Oreo. Are we seeing the similarities here? If you live in an area that's fairly dense and has a lot of older buildings, if you see the corner on the, the street corner having a wall at an angle, that probably means it was a storefront. Uh, and if you want to do more research on that, see if your area has fire insurance maps because you can actually see what type of store it was. Okay, but GG doesn't stand for grocery girls, so let's get back to the Gilmore Girls. One of my favorite things about the show is the amount of discourse about it. It's why I wanted to make this video. It ran for seven seasons. And in the following 15 years, I've seen the most insane takes that I happily slurp up with a ladle. And often it all rotates around what happened to Rory? Every year I see the blame shifting to a different person. Lorelai, Dean, Jess, Logan, Mitchum, the Gilmores, Yale, Chilton. But what I think really happened to Rory was she was the only character who wasn't fully developed yet. So much of Gilmore Girls is that nothing ever changes. When we meet Lorelai, she is fully formed. She's funny, she's loud, she's quick. She's so confident, it's hard to even see yourself in her. Emily Gilmore and Richard Gilmore have personalities that are fully set in stone. The people of Stars Hollow are unchanging too. They might get new jobs or new love interests or new confidence, but the essence of who they are is not changing. This leaves Rory as the only character who's still becoming herself. With her mom, she can talk as fast as an auctioneer and keep up and keep that pace. And with her grandparents, she can be well-mannered and reserved. But in that way, she's kind of amorphous. I don't think either of those are who she really is. For everyone, she seems to default to one of those two kind of personalities or modes. And neither of them seems to be truly herself. And a person who doesn't know who they are is very normal in real life. But somehow in Stars Hollow, it almost breaks the fourth wall because nothing is meant to change and she's changing. And that gets to the essence of Stars Hollow. What makes everything familiar is that nothing changes. The people, the buildings, it all stays the same. Every time I go back to my hometown, so much is different every single time. The Kmart's gone. The bridge got a second side to it, so there's more lanes. The Panera is now a Domino's. The school isn't where the school was before. It's all pretty boring stuff, but it's the type of thing that happens. Ideally, it adjusts to the needs of the people who live there, but no matter what, it will be changing. And sometimes they're good changes, and sometimes it's the type of changes that mean the place that you live is so far away from the places that you work. Account Pedestrian Dignity on TikTok. He shows his journey walking and shows other people's experiences as pedestrians. Most of his walks don't look much like Stars Hollow. His walks are the reality of what a lot of Americans see. No sidewalks, unsafe pedestrian conditions, no bus shelter. Right now, that's kind of any town USA. And Lorelai can love the snow because she doesn't have to walk across a five lane road multiple times to walk to work. And that's what happens when your commercial zone where you work and you shop and you eat is miles away and badly connected to your residential zone where you live. And I know that walkable towns and cities still exist, 
but every year the home prices seem higher and higher. When a walkable community is something that you can be priced out of, you're being priced out of a livable life. Here's the thing I try and remember. In 1939, they built this whole set to look like a town in the US. And their sets might not be changing anytime soon, but real places can. They do it all the time. Gilmore Girls and so many other comfort shows are impersonating a version of us. And although there might be less traditionally handsome, gruff men with a heart of gold per capita, there could definitely be more sidewalks. I'm Kendra Gaylord. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe. I've got other videos that you can check out too. Bye.